Now, if the physical exam doesn't show us any abnormalities, or often it will show us only vague abnormalities, and we want to pinpoint which organs or what may be the problem, then we have to do x-rays or lab work. Let's check that out. It's when you take blood from the leg. Even though it looks gross, a great place to get a blood sample is to put the needle into the jugular vein in the neck. As you can see, the needle's advanced in and the blood's drawn off pretty quickly. This isn't the case. The legs are often more painful. The blood then is transmitted to vials to put the blood in and to mix it up to make sure it doesn't clot so that we can see the white blood cells and red blood cells in it. Then the blood is put into different containers for specific for our blood machine. These containers are put into a centrifuge to spin down the red blood cells and white blood cells so that the serum at the top of the tubes can be put into the machine. The information is entered, the, the uh, tubes are taken out of the centrifuge, the serum is on top, the liquid that we're going to put into the machine, and the red blood cells and white blood cells are on the bottom. The serum is emptied off of the top into the small little cups they go inside the um, go inside the blood chemistry machine. The containers are put into the blood chemistry machine along with a tray containing the enzymes that the serum is dropped on to get the values the machine records. There it goes. Well, the machine has spit out the results. And what a veterinarian has to do now is interpret the results. The normal values are all in the center, and those markers that are black and in the center are normal. If a marker is red and on one side or the other line, then it's abnormal. So I have to interpret those results. The chemistries, which reflect the organs in the body, are down here. The red blood cells and white blood cells are up here. What do chemistries mean, anyway? Blood chemistry machines measure normal molecules and byproducts of living that we all have. Take the dog and the cat. Their organs, shown here in the picture, will put out certain molecules, just like a car puts out exhaust. And the machine will measure how much of those are in the blood. If there's too much in the blood, it might mean that organs having problems due to an infection or a tumor or a disease. Let's look at it in another way with a prop. Let's pretend that this bag of water with red food coloring is a liver. Now, the liver will leak a little bit of the red food coloring water and it will go into the blood. Our lab machine will pick up that amount as normal because all organs leak a little bit. But let's pretend that this liver now has a bacterial infection or an autoimmune infection or a cancer. So what happens is that infection will make this leak a lot. Now our machine will pick up bigger numbers of enzymes. The red blood cells and white blood cells are measured by the, the machine counting them how many there are in a little tiny bit of fluid and it will it will give their numbers in this area if they're in the markers in the middle of the column then the the number of red blood cells and white blood cells are normal red blood cells in normal amounts are those which carry oxygen and if you're anemic you don't have as many red blood cells as you need to carry that oxygen white blood cells in normal amounts are circulating in the body on alert to protect us. If you have too many white blood cells, they're there because of infections or inflammations or tumors. So that's what we're looking for when we look at the results on the lab tests. Let's take a look at some white blood cells under a slide. A bit of blood is put on a slide. It's spread out, then stained. Then that stained slide is dried, as you see here, then put under a microscope and focus down on so we can see the cells more clearly under an oil. We're real fortunate because this slide is already labeled. 
you'll see a lot of spherical uh, cells with pale centers. Those are the red blood cells. They're like little frisbees that circulate through the system carrying oxygen. Low numbers of those mean that you can't carry as much ox oxygen and you'll feel weak. And that happens with anemia, blood loss, parasites, and immune problems. Your white blood cells, which are the bigger cells towards the center and up to your left, are those cells that are circulating in your body all the time looking for fights. They want to protect you against invaders. They, they apprehend suspects and they take them to jail and then they fingerprint them and they send out anybody to arrest any other invaders. So we're glad to have them active and we look for those um, in the slide and see if there's signs that they've been fighting recently. Well, sounds pretty easy, does it? In reality, the organs in the dog and cat can fool us. Some organs will not put out much enzyme and be, ver and be very sick. And others won't, will put out a lot of enzyme and not be hurt at all. So the veterinarian always has to interpret the results in lieu of what he sees in the clinic. And the machines don't print out a special little piece of paper with a diagnosis, even though we wish they would. Because that would be easier, wouldn't it? Well, thanks. Next, we're going to check out x-rays.